for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. First order of business is approval of minutes for February 11th and February 25th. I read them and viewed them, and they were fine. So moved. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? And that should be unanimous. Okay, awesome. Uh, what is it? I'm sorry, I've got the agenda here. Okay, uh, 242-1634. And 16, uh, 242 request to continue to um, April 8th. So moved. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? And that's unanimous. Okay, next order of business is 242, and I know we have a DP number. 242, we just emailed it. Yeah, I did just email it to you. 242-1649. Um, 1649. Very. Berry Street Beach. Just via email. Yeah, I figured that. So we need to do this one. Yeah. Are there any abutters? <laughs> I, I, I move that we deemed the reading to have been read. Been read. Second. Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Opposed? You don't have to do green cards for us in the future. Green cards, green cards. Do you have the paper copies of the updated paper? I know I need them. No, I've got it. They're printed on the shelf. Oh, you can give it to them. They're printed on the shelf. Uh, for the record, I'm Amanda Crouch Smith on behalf of the Department of Conservation, Recreation, Lakes and Ponds Division. Uh, I'm with Horsley Witten Group. I'm their wetland scientist, and I'm the representative for the applicant. And we have updated our waiver request form uh, to also include a waiver for the plan requirements. And so I have printed several copies. I emailed them to Jennifer uh, earlier this morning, but I just wanted to hand them out so you all had a paper copy. Thank you. So the waiver request I asked them to amend was they don't have survey plans or um, an actual delineation based on the work in the resource areas it really isn't needed or necessary um, but that would be a waiver of our our filing requirements so and they do intend to work in the 25 again as you'll you'll hear in the presentation um, as mentioned uh, my name is Amanda I'm here on behalf of DCR and DCR is proposing to restore the beach on Berry Pond, which is in Harold Parker State Forest. And Berry Pond Beach is on the northwest side of the pond. Berry Pond is a four acre pond. It's a DCR owned and operated property. The beach has been sort of derelict and out of use for about eight years. I think a lot of it has been due to um, funding for lifeguards and things like that. And Due to the inactiveness of it, the beach itself, um, the soils have become eroded, compacted, and full of uh, weedy and nuisance vegetation that you wouldn't typically encounter on, you know, a favorable, you know, public swimming beach at a park property. And so the, and this property also supports a wash house, um, picnic facilities. It's a it's a large day use facility. There are you know toilets and grills and picnic areas, changing stalls. And so DCR is seeking to restore this beach. They want to excavate a 25 by 100 foot area within the existing beach, no more than 12 inches deep. So it'd be no more than. Um, 2,500 cubic feet or 92 cubic yards of sand. And they would remove the sand, take it off site, and then replace the sand with clean, screened, washed, seed free sand and um, reinitiate this as a public swimming beach. And we understand that, jurisdictionally speaking, this would be Inland Bank. And as we did not formally delineate this in the field, and it's been more of a GIS exercise in looking at photographs. Um, and vegetation indicators. It looks like a portion of the inland bank. Um, it, there's a stone wall that extends past the beach, and so that sort of bounds the beach. And mean low to mean high water would serve as the inland beach based, based upon the regulations. And 
So the remainder of that would be the buffer zone. So all of the work would occur entirely within the buffer zone to Inland Bank and Inland Bank itself. And we understand um, just because that 50 and 25 foot uh, buffer zones are locally regulated. We're not proposing structures, but there will be temporary impacts to that area. Um, it's going to be restored in kind. It's going to be restored to the pre-existing use. Um, it's pretty much a straightforward project. Um, erosion sedimentation controls are proposed in the form of straw wattles. There will be just one singular site access path, all equipment and construction materials will be staged outside of resource areas and it'll be um, just an excavator going back and forth and the sand will be trucked in with a you know just a large truck so it's um pretty basic and so with that i'll turn it over to the commission if you have questions which i assume you do <laughs> thank you joe um none of, none of this time let you guys go first oh no in your notice on photo number four on page four of six, is that is that a representation of the limit of work area? You just give me one second to get there with you. Yes. Page three of six? No. It's, uh, it's uh, 3.0 pr pr uh, proposed project, page four of six, and it's photo number four. Yes, correct. Is that is that uh, representative of the limit of work? It is, and you will note the um, the erratics and sort of um, glacial features there. The rocks, those will be left in place. The sand will be excavated around it, and so the 25 by 100 feet and that 2,500 cubic feet um, area of disturbance is a maximum area given. Um, you know the glacial erratics and other features within that area that won't be touched. So, you think the maximum is 100 by 25? Correct. Based upon our consultations with the contractor. Very, and probably the amount of sand you're going to buy. Yep. Yep. That would limit. That would limit the work. Correct. Unless you're buying. Okay. Very good. Uh, I'm all set, Mr. Chen. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. <coughs> um, do we? Did you guys do a? Um, is this one of the ponds that they did the um, stern pond? Different one. Okay, so this doesn't. This doesn't. This, this is doesn't clean. have the vegetation management program. Okay. Yeah, the aerial photo shows some vegetation. <laughs> yeah, it does. <laughs> Further yeah. out, you can tell they they've cleaned the pond before within. Yeah, okay. yeah. I couldn't remember. That I, was, I was wondering the same thing when I saw when I saw that vegetation. I was wondering the exact same thing. Is this the one we just told them they could no. clean it? No. Oh, okay. Stern. It was Stern's pond. Gotcha. Big, okay. Bigger pond. So. Um, the thing I'm curious about um, the sand. The sand. You're saying nine, 96 yards. I mean, not that it makes a difference as long as the beach area is the same. But I, I think that's an underestimate est, estimate. Estimate. But because um, sand doesn't disperse. Uh, no, I don't. Aside from that, I just have any. Now all the other stuff, the buildings and stuff, that's all functional, right? Are they still functional? Correct. Correct. Yeah, it's still used as a picnic area. It's just that the swimming beach has been closed, I think, because of lifeguard uh, funding, mm -hmm. just okay. based upon my research and consultation with DCR. Okay. How are they going to get below that wall? Or are they going to excavate from above? They're, I think they're going to perch on top of the wall. I don't think they're going to need to get around it. They're just going to kind okay. of with the excavator, they'll be able to dig around it. I was just wondering because it doesn't appear that they get below the wall. So no, it is well vegetated on either end. <laughs> it's possible. That would actually that's, that's how you do it. That's the that exactly that's, that, that's, that, that's the way you do it. Take the bobcat right down the stairs, rubber tires, get oh, it done. We use track machines now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Get rubber yeah. tires. Almost. Yeah. No more tires. Track. Yeah. No, I'm using tracks now. Wow. My next one will be track. I gotta go to. I gotta get updated. I have to come over. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Okay. Um, how far down are you going? Are they going to go to remove the old beach sand and um, the prep work for that base? Work will not occur beyond mean high water. Okay. So the, the high water line, no work will occur within the water or land under water bodies or waterways. And so all work will be above the water line. And any prep work, any staging is going to be outside of the 100 foot buffer zone. And then as you see on um, 
I think you have it there, and I have it here too, but the, the access way will just be a singular access way to meet, uh, minimize disturbance within that buffer zone, and then um, it'll just be excavated, brought back out on that singular access way and put in the truck. I don't know if that, does that address your question or? Yeah, and oh. that, that's one of them, but um, you're going to remove the old sand? Correct. And w where will you deposit that? Honestly, I would have to check with the contractor on that, but a d suitable disposal s facility, it wouldn't be disposed of on site. Okay. And um, th the new sand, where is the new sand coming from? It is, I have that in my notes. I, Bentley. Well, Bentley Warren. Bentley Warren, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Um, you, sh you show the path and uh, the limit of work. Um, What's the uh, what's the hat cross hatched area up above that the path leads to? That would be the staging area, just um, for illustrative purposes, just to show that it is distanced outside of the resource areas. So when machinery is yep. inactive, it stays there. Correct. Okay. Yep, near the parking area and the existing structures. And can you do you have enough room to get your vehicles in and out of there? Yes, yeah, I have consulted with uh, some co-eco contractors, they're the contractor, and so they have helped develop this and have... Without any tree cutting or Correct. anything? Correct. Really? Okay. They'll be able to get in and out. I have no more questions. Okay. Motion? Oh, I'm sorry, Joe, you have no more I was questions. digesting while you guys were talking. It takes me a while to reacclimate. <laughs> <laughs> but I think I'm here. Um, so you said you weren't you were working above the mean high water and the work would be contained above that uh, but you're taking out of about a foot of, of the sand that's there and yeah. replacing with new sand so in that area that you're going to be working in the wet theoretically right well you yeah gonna, if, you, if you imagine if you're the high water, water you're kind of, so you're going to be working in the wet so my question really is and i'm looking i'm trying to get a feel for the grade and the photographs look like the beach is relatively flat but um yeah, I'm, trying it's to get very a feel of, I'm trying to get a feel of whether straw wattles are actually the, f the effect of erosion control or siltation control at, at the water. Trench siltation fence? I'm thinking it, rather than the straw wattles, just a sill fence would be, would be more of a containment for silt migration. You know? that it's anchored correctly. Uh, yeah, the, we, the big we thing with siltation sure fence, it needs bales or something to hold it in place. No, if it's if, put it in properly. Trenched, Let us put it in right, yeah. Trenched and done, it, it's good. Um, you don't want bales because if they're bringing in clean sand, you don't want any right, seeds no, I, in it. I understand the invasive species that can come with the bales, but I'm just using that as an illustration when, 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 the, when the cell fencing is, if it's not trenched and buried. Well, on a slope, on a slope, you're right, because anything that rolled down would yeah. migrate into it and could potentially right knock it over. But if all they're doing is, you're going to put the cell fence in beyond the limit Correct. of where you're going to excavate. You're going to excavate in front and fill, yeah. and you, you'd be okay. The reason why I'm thinking that the wattles, even, even staked in, yeah, it could go right over. Not slopping around yeah. in, in the wet, gonna... taking the sand out. I think you, that sand is going to want to move under the wattle. I think the traditional fence is the way to do that. Well, we're open to anything the commission uh, would like to see as far as erosion control. No, you're not planning on doing anything with the wall that's or the stairs. Correct. No, that's going to remain. Looking. Everything is going to remain in place. The only intent of this is to replace the beach sand for a safe, um, weed free public beach area for recreational purposes. And we're, um, and we're confident that the footings of that wall are below the area we are working, so you're Correct. not going to be undermining the wall. And yes. it's not yeah. concerned with the undermining of the no, wall. we are not. I'm also. Okay. Any more questions? Motion? Just the recommendation. Well, we didn't have a DEP number before, but now if you're satisfied, we can close an issue. 21 days. Are you requesting a close? May, will there be a special condition for different erosion control? Yeah, okay. I, I'll condition that. Okay. I have to approve waivers first, right? Oh, yes, a waivers first. Uh, that's right. Okay. You're so right. Um, okay, we'll start there. I'll move that we grant the waiver request uh, as drafted on the document dated 3 12 15 5.1. 25 foot no disturbance zone or 5.2 50 foot no build. And plan requirements. And plan requirements 4.3.2. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? And 
action is. I will take a motion. Move that we close an issue in 21 days or less. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? And action is. Thank you. May I ask, um, just to forward on to our contractor, what would you, you would want silt fence? Stake the trench stake station fence. Perfect. Thank you all so much for your time. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, now we're going to do a bunch of continuances. 242-1644-687-4 Street, request to continue to April 8th. So moved. Check. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? And that's unanimous. 242-1643-674 Turnpike Street, Request to continue to April 8th. So moved. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? And that's unanimous. And 242 172 Summer Street. Request to continue to April 8th. So moved. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? And that's unanimous. We have 242-1648 uh, Rosemont Drive, Chestnut Street, not the end of a public works. So I think at the last meeting we were waiting for a deep EP file number, we were largely, it's, you know, replacement of um, water line in the roadway, cut and cover. Uh, I went out and looked at the uh, wetland line, you know, even though I can't dig soils, it's largely a toe slope, bottom of the road sort of thing. Um, I, don't have, I don't have much concern about it. Any questions, Joe? slow again catching up. This is Rosemont and Chestnut? Yes. So from Peachtree until the base of Rosemont is in buffer zone to um, Mosquito Brook and to BVW, BVW associated with it. The rest of the project goes up Rosemont and we talked about that briefly at the last meeting but um, it's out of jurisdiction. It's out of jurisdiction. What are they doing? Are they putting a new water main in? New t 10 inch to 12 inch oh, 12 I think. Water they're going to eliminate the one uh, the 8 inch from Station up on uh, Rosemont. That's that's the plan. The subdivision is not that old. I mean, we're redoing the whole. Right, it doesn't matter. I'm not going to get into that. And you're absolutely right. But I, I thought the same thing, and I asked some Me questions too. at the last meeting. And I mean, it's not like there's been new houses built in there. That, no, it's come on. Because they were eliminating the pump station too, and I we inquired about that and and the. And they said, actually, she said it was pretty rugged. Mm -hmm. it, was, it was pretty rugged. It was going to be in need of repair shortly. Rosemont's well, been there for a while, but <laughs> no, no, ten years. <laughs> more than that, but more? well, more than ten. But more, you know, more than ten. Well, you know, new water systems you'd hope to get. 90s. 50, 60, 70 years. <laughs> yeah, late people yeah, actually, I'm going to say mm -hmm. late 90s. 90s. Yeah, late 90s. Um, but I mean, that, that's besides the point. Right. The, the project's the project. You guys have already talked about it. I'm just right. kind of curious why yeah. if I was missing something. Was it the, another part of the subdivision I wasn't aware of? Right. Plus, they're, they're increasing the line. So. Um, so the concern there, of course, is <laughs> slope stability going up road. Slope stability. Then, slope know, stability. The, the trench yeah. must have stabilized by now. Because remember when they first went in, that's when that's oh, yeah. the very first day is when we lost that, that whole hill. Yes. That was Bay Hill, too. Yep. Yep, that was, well. Almost. Mm. No, it was worse. Yeah. Was it worse? It was oh, worse. Yeah. It was oh, worse because, it was worse because, because, because this, this all went right down into Mosquito Brook. It, it, it just, it took out hundreds of feet of Mosquito Brook. I do remember and, that. Um, they and, and, stabilize the slope. And what made it so amazing was the contract. So when you say tow a slope. The wetland tow a slope. Wetland tow a slope. Per, yeah, yeah perpendicular areas. to the roadway, right? So the resource area is going out this way and the roadway is going this way. So. And the, no, the work is in the roadway, not in, in the, the toll of the nope, slope that, in the roadway. that I'm referring to. Right. right. Okay, I'm all set. Yeah. Uh, no questions. Yep. Motion. Check. Motion. Yeah. We close an issue in 21 days or less. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? And that's unanimous. Okay. Okay. General business. General business. I know him. So long. 242-257, uh, request to continue until May 13th. They're trying to do it, an as-built. We can't do it. Too much snow on the ground. Okay. So moved. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? And that's unanimous. 242-333, uh, uh, request to continue to May 13th. So moved. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? And that's unanimous. 242-1589, COC requests for Osgood Street, request to continue. 
They did submit additional materials to Lisa based on her initial review, so that that's ongoing. But they um, can't put the can't take out the erosion control and can't put in the signage. So. Okay. Uh, request to continue till April twenty second. So moved. Second. All the favor say aye. Aye. Opposed. Next unanimous. Okay. Bylaw regulation revisions. So. Um, Lisa and I have a call tomorrow to talk about stormwater, but barring stormwater, you have in front of you um, a change. Oh, you know what I need to give them with the checklist? Yeah. They have the checklist? Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So the things that we're, we're looking to vote tonight, because we seem to be revising the regs one piece at a time. Um, what did we revise last time? We changed. Um, you made copies of the checklist? Put them in here, or are they separate? Because I don't think I have. I, I handed right out the, the regs. Bottom of the pile. The back of your pile. Way down. The back. Got it. Got so it. the checklists have been revised to yes. reference our new um, submission. Um, new submission standards. You can submit the full blown nine copies, or you can submit two full size copies and an electronic copy. Um, we're kind of hoping people are going to go electronic. Eventually, we'd like to make that, you know, full. N nobody has the option of submitting paper, but we're still kind of in the transition zone. But I think most regular filers will take advantage of that and give us um, paper. And I thought we pretty much approved that a long time ago. Well, we did in theory, but we didn't actually vote it because we were waiting on the stormwater regs. But it's clear the stormwater regs are going to take more time. So these are things we want instituted. We want them on our checklist. We want them on our web page. We want them in the bylaw we, regulations. We don't, we don't want to keep talking to people about, oh, you can do this. We just want it stated. We encouraged it two years ago. We're right. pretty much following it. But. So the other would be, um, you have a separate sheet. The one that I copied in the bylaw sheet isn't the wording we want to use. It's on the, um, the separate page on the fee schedule, and it's for boundary verification or wetland delineation verification. And again, we discussed this at last year, um, that we give everyone with their NOI filing 100 feet of boundary verification free. You know, that's included in your notice of intent filing. Anything beyond 100 feet, you know, if you're at, and this isn't an ANRAD, you're filing an NOI. So ANRAD and Category 6, which is wetland delineation, are excluded from this fee. It's only if you're filing your NOI and your wetland delineation under the same NOI filing. Then you get 100 feet included in the filing fee. After that, it's the $1 per foot verification. Because what happens often is someone submits a filing for a subdivision and, you know, a thousand squeed of, a thousand, linear feet of wetland delineation and you know that's a lot of work on top of re reviewing an NOI so it, it kind of warranted its separate fee. That being said I highlighted the emergency cert fee. Mo most towns don't charge for an emergency cert. Um, a lot of times this is you know this is catastrophic you know something deck falling down or you know we want to issue um, something right away so people get we don't want to put a fee in the way of that. And I think the way that if it's something that we feel a fee is required and there's review and we can we can require right on the um, emergency cert form is to require the filing of an after the fact notice of intent or RDA or whatever where we would get our filing fee. So I, I would suggest eliminating that one. We've never collected on it because anytime things are an emergency, we've had some with sewer and a couple other things. We're not asking people for money. We're just saying, yeah, yeah, get that fixed now. Why remove it? I don't understand. Because what, what? we don't collect it. We, don't, we, don't, we just don't do it to people. But you have the option. We do. And, and I'd rather see you have the option. I think what I'm hearing, though, is we... If we're required to collect it, we should be collecting it. Through the... Well, no. exactly. I, I, if it's on the list, we should be collecting No waiving it. You know, right. It puts the administration in, in difficult position. But if the, if the logic that you're using, if, if I'm picking up on it, is so they, they do the work under an emergency certification, which requires, that's where we have to show discipline. If it requires an after the fact notice of intent, that's where we get the fee. Right. We, would, we could still get a fee. But what I'm saying is when, when building comes to me and says this building's a hazard, you know, I don't want to be sitting around waiting for my $200 filing fee before the building falls down. I, 
I want them to go fix that. I think the fee should come then when you know you say, well, we had to go and do this. Building commission we'll waiving his demo demolition permit fee. I don't really know. Of course, he's not. <laughs> well, I, I, well, a lot of times the emergency gets declared so they don't have to file, right? So that something's in our jurisdiction and it's so immediate that there's no week and a half lag time for them to submit a filing. I don't, just, I don't ever remember anything being that immediate. It's, it's often um, beaver mitigation is one of the things. And again, we don't go in, the town isn't required to pay the fee. We did some for GLSD when they had a sewer manhole mm -hmm. sink or something like that. Um, again, you know, when someone comes to you and they're sort of in distress, it seems like a bad time to ask for $200. But other towns don't have it. I think we got a couple of things in play here. If we're not collecting it, and if you, if you guys are showing discretion and charging it or not charging it kind of at will, then it shouldn't be in the fee schedule. Right. That I think we have to deal with first. The question is, is if it is on there, why is it we're not collecting it? Should we should we really just put the hammer down? And I think you make a case of compassion. It's, get somebody when they're down, maybe not the right time to do it. So so we so we give them an emergency certification. They do the work under emergency circumstance. We can we require an after the make them fact. file after the fact. What They're going to they pay don't? another fee. What if they don't? If you give them the emergency well, certification, then, then, then it's an enforcement action. I mean, most people, you know, I've, I've done this in, in another community, but I've, I've never had to do it here because most of the work's not ever warranted in after the fact filing. You know, if they repair their manhole, I, I don't need to see it on a you know, plan afterwards or anything like that. I think it's more when the work requires you to do something in addition to what's already on the ground that you would then require an after the fact filing. But. Well, we don't have to change that one today. We're still keeping bylaw regulation changes open, but I would recommend the boundary verification fee. Well, if, if we're not collecting it, and like you say, if we're doing it arbitrarily, that's not a good thing. That's not a good thing at all. So, and how many times has it happened? Probably hardly ever. Uh, maybe the majority of them have been um, beaver flooding instances where we've authorized the town and they've come to us and, you know, road flooded, whatever. Uh, the only other one I can remember is the GLSD one. When the manhole sunk down off of uh, North Main, we, South Bradford Street DPW. Didn't we have a couple of collapse? We had something yeah. happen. But DPW again, they're not paying they're the fees. Exempt. So right, they're so like I'm saying, probably you know it's just rare that you we would ever collect a fee. But we can leave it in there and. I, 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 I just soon make a decision one way or the other because it, it, that's that's what happens. We model and then we just kind of like. Well, we can leave it in there. It's not hurting anybody. But what I'm saying is the next time I have to collect one, I'm going to have to collect one. I don't like this sort of we don't use this fee, we use this fee. Like if it's in there, we got to use it. I'm not saying whether we need one or not. I'm saying is if we're not collecting, if that's what we, what we think we should do, we should get rid of it. If that's where we're going, we shouldn't be having it on the schedule. Because it makes your job yeah. difficult because someone's going to challenge it in the future one way or the other. And there's not that many who say that we even have to, we had the opportunity to collect it. So. It's a town entity that has to declare the emergency or a state entity. It's not like people can go around declaring their own emergencies. This is an emergency. I need to do this now. That doesn't happen. You know, the building dis inspector has to say it's an emergency. The DPW, you know, someone in DPW has to say this is an emergency. It isn't something. Board of Health has to say it's an emergency. Right. right. We don't say things are an emergency, and neither do the applicants. So it's it's strictly over the top fee. Yeah. You know, so when sewage is spewing out, you know, I, I don't want to be asking for a $200 fee. It just doesn't seem like the right time. I think the thought was, and there's some logic to it, is that there's some level of effort involved right. for you to administer to that, you or the, whoever was here at the time, to administer to it. And there's some value in that, and we ought to be, and a goal was to get be made right. whole on, on our administrative burden. You know. So you've shown compassion. You've done all the you can to help them usher them through the emergency portion of it. You've even helped them provide temporary erosion control recommendations. You've done all kinds of things, but in the end, you've you've gotten nothing in in support of you of, of all that effort. And I think it's what the original logic was. I'm not sure that logic still exists today, but that's what the original was. Well, I mean, having heard what I've heard, I understand we can leave it in. Like I said, I. I 
maybe the one time I should have applied it, I didn't apply it. And the majority of the time, it's it's town issues, and it's not. It's kind of a moot point anyway. But it was one when I was looking at the list of what other towns do. So the delineation fee was one we weren't doing. And I said, you know, this makes sense. Mm -hmm. If we're reviewing a lot of delineations under NOIs and they get to be expansive, we, that's a lot of my time out there. Um, versus, you know, the time I spend on an emergency cert is usually, you know, taking a drive and going, yeah, that's a problem. <laughs> Calling Lou and saying, can we write this up? And you know, doing it. It's it's not a lot of a lot of effort, but um Any understood. Any input? Uh, I think we should leave it in. Yeah. I think we should take it out. <laughs> I think we should take it out. You say it Alan wants it in, so we're split. Lou has you know what? We're, we're coming. We're coming back in, to these. In, it seems like it's not. It seems like it's not a big burden, in in terms of frequency of happening, and even when it does happen, it's not a. It's not an overwhelming thing, and um, maybe one to pick. Maybe that's why a lot of towns don't have it because it's not a high value thing. And if those and circumstances present themselves as being bigger than normal, that's going to probably drive the after-the-fact filing. Right. Yeah. So, all right, if I'm the deciding vote, I think we should vote. Okay, well, we'll vote in a few minutes. We've got more to go through. So. Okay. I mean, if we can vote on them separately, if you want. Do you want to vote on the, the checklist and the fee schedule? I think we'd better because at okay. least poll it like we just did, because I think getting unanimity on on all of the items might be difficult. <laughs> so on, on changing the checklist and the regulations to be the two full-size copies and one electronic copy would be the first vote. Okay. We're all good for that. I'm in favor. Yeah. That. So unanimous. That's unanimous. The, the second would be the um, bylaw fee for wetland delineation review beyond 100 feet. For that. Yeah, favor. Absolutely. Favor. Unanimous. Unanimous. Okay. Second would be the uh, remove the fee for emergency cert. And that's three to two. Aye. 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 Nay. Aye. Nay. Nay. Jack and I would take it out. Everybody, the other three, so I'd leave it in. So. So the, you wanted it in, right, Lou? Yeah. Three percent. No, three we to wanted two. it out. Oh, you wanted it out. Yeah, oh, so three it two is out. out. Yeah. Three two removes it. So oh, out. removes three it. Out. Yes. Three two removes it. I thought yeah. you. Sorry, I thought it was like the other. Wake up. Oh. Give, give him a break. He's just he's working back in slow. Okay. He's still plowing snow. <laughs> still seeing white. So I guess the other, you know, as I read them, Lisa has included a lot of things in the the revisions, and they they're all. Jen, can we just go back one second? They're all stormwater related, so I think we should leave them until we, we do the stormwater Jen, part. Yep. Can we just go back a second? The additional instructional services. Yep. What, what is that? Uh, That's when people's projects become onerous to have to attend. Okay. We, I know where you're thinking. <laughs> and it's only, a hundred, only 50. I think it should be 100. Well, we'd What's have to. What are you, you're talking. I'm let's start about. using it and then see, because we're not using it. Well, but I understand it. where you think we should use it. Uh, yeah, we could, we could almost get a salary. <laughs> the other one we don't use is to remove an enforcement order. You know, we, we do have our enforcement order fees, but I have yet to charge somebody for removing an enforcement okay. order. That's one we need to, when someone says, I'd like this taken off my record. Um, when we write that removal, we need to request that $100 fee. But um, like I said, I, I'd like to do some. I'd like to get some input from the commission on this because I, I, we have Heidi does this every day. What? Additional inspectional services. Yep. Every day. So when you get a permit, order conditions from us. We know there's a project with multiple phases, and we're out there periodically because that's what we would normally do. And that would not be additional, that would be the basic inspections. Even if I'm on a big subdivision, I'm out there 20, 30, 40 times, I'm 
exaggerating, but you know, out there an awful lot of time. We would consider that part of the normal permit, and that was covered under the, on a larger project, was probably covered under the application fees. I think things that are obvious is when you go out there to do an inspection and find a violation, or to have them go out and rework it and come back out and reinspect it. Reinspections, absolutely should be an additional well, charge. I don't, I don't even have a problem with reinspection. So we go, we find something wrong, and we reinspect it, and we say we're going to come out next Tuesday and look at this again, next week's inspection, and it's still not right, and I have to come back a day later, then I'm charging you a, a reinspect, you know. It's the stuff we have to go back to constantly because we say do this, do that, do this, do that, and then they don't do it. Or they do half of it. Or they, they do, do half of it. And so you it's, go. it's arrow when you quiver to, to use when you need right. to. Right, when but people you don't, are really you making it You only do it when you need to. Right. And which, and so I guess the debate becomes it's 50 bucks enough. So which fine That's what I'm saying. I think it should be 100 I don't think it is either. I think, yeah. I think it's, in fact, I think it's worth more than 100 so. Because if we're showing that sort of discretion, $50 doesn't amount to anything. Yeah. And, uh, this, this, this comes under the old saying of money equals compliance. Mm -hmm. And if you're not getting compliance and if nobody's afraid of you, and there's no fear of any punishment of any kind, you're going to really be working twice as hard as you need to. So additional inspection fee is 100. Well, the problem no, becomes... We, we, we no, haven't agreed on 100. Yet. We uh, haven't agreed on 100. Uh, yeah. Like I said, I mean, it, because it, it, and it's tough on the staff. I mean, yeah. the staff goes out on we have money not agreed. and they look at something. And Just don't make oh. it impossible to collect. <laughs> no, we won't. Well, we'll collect it. I mean... I think they want their bond collected. Well, because this is going to apply to other people besides just who you're thinking. No, so know, understanding that somebody can pay $100 maybe a couple times over is going to be different from the average homeowner who finds I, himself in a bad situation. I think the, yeah, but if it gives you the discretion of what you were charging or of what has become unreasonable, the average homeowner may, you can understand that they may not know the process get it on the first try and you know yeah so I, I think in your own discretion you can decide on that but if the average homeowner hires someone to do the work for them and the person they hire is not making it a priority and you need to get their attention you need to get their attention. but I think a hundred dollars does that on to the individual homeowner and to the non-individual homeowner we just assess it more often <laughs> I mean, let's just think for a certificate of compliance where Heidi and I could spend upwards of two, three, four hours looking at plans, doing re-review, we get paid $200. I mean, an additional site visit, 50, you know, it's that I'm not, we're not spending days out there. And Heidi's doing all solo. No, I, 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 it just sort of depends on the project who's kind of taking the lead on it. So. But Heidi's on the road. Heidi's on the road a lot more. You guys aren't going out there together. We're not no, trying no, to recapture no. the <laughs> four Only on certain sites. Only on certain sites. But, but it, it depends. No, it depends on, on, on what, what, the, what the mission is, what, what they're going out after. Um, it, it ends up being, it's, 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 Joe, what it's turning into, it's we're monitoring yeah. projects. And if, there's, if, if there needs to be that's a monitor, right. the applicant has to hire the monitor. And if the applicant hires a monitor that's not compliant or not responsive to what you're asking, I think that you have to have a way to get compliance and get their attention. That's how the system works, as I understand it anyway. If you're hiring a consultant to be a monitor, he's charging at least $100 an hour. At least $100, and, yeah. and, least, and, yeah. if, and if he's coming out and you're not ready, is he not going to charge his client? Of course he is. Of course he is. Right. That's why I think 100, you know, we're not spending hours on the site. We're spending 45, you know, 30, 40 minutes on a site. So you gotta I get there and go back. Well, and if we go back, we charge another fee. That's what I'm saying. I think we can. You know what I'm saying, like, it's, when, like when you say, it's like you said, you say, you go out there and look and you, you agree on the, the violation. You go, okay, we're going to fix this. And you come back two days later, you drive all the way back out there, and it's not done. So you, how many times have you assessed a $50 additional fee? How many times? I haven't. Never have. Let's put it at 100 and let's see how it goes. It's, and we it, can always change it next year. I need to ask one question. Okay. Are you not assessing the fees because you're just not comfortable doing it? No, we're not assessing the fees because, you know, we view it as monitoring. We're out there, we're looking, you know, and then, so we're out someplace else the next day, so we go back. But there, there's projects that take advantage of that and make us do a lot of extra work, and those are the ones that deserve to be charged. The point is we already have that tool in there. We could be 
the that's what I'm saying. That's you're already using. It seems to me that for the effort of assessing the fifty dollars, it's not worth fighting about it. But if it's, right. it's a hundred dollars, would we be doing it, or would, or would we be having the same discussion next year? No, we're gonna we'll no. call it the um, Heidi roll your eyes fee. No, so when this, you know Heidi comes been, back to the office and goes, oh, still not done, we go, that's it, because charge the fee. Do we do we have to issue tickets for this? No. No, these these no. are you. If it's in the rigs. If you know. I have to come back out there to make sure this is done, I'm gonna charge you a hundred bucks, and we have to start saying that. We have to say. You know, if your monitor comes tomorrow and tells me this isn't done, and Heidi has to come back out here on Monday, there's going to be a hundred dollar fee, and here's where it says we have that that and, ability. And I think it's sensible to keep a log of those things, right? A warning that if I have to come out again, it's a hundred. Yep. And and then what you observed that warranted the hundred the next time out. And if you make I mean, a meeting with somebody and, and the monitor doesn't show up, you charge them because the Right. They're not there. I think it's just some brief notes, but uh, keep a log of, of reasons yeah. why you're charging this, because if they're challenged, um, yeah. that log is so going to be invaluable. For that one particular one. It's the only way we can enforce it. All right, so we're going to up a So your, your comfort level, you have a comfort level at 100. Is that what I'm I do. You? Just you based level? on the amount of time I'm going to spend on an additional site inspection. I am not going to spend all day out there. An additional site inspection is going to involve me telling them it's still not right. Here's how you make it right. And if you make me come back out here again to make sure it's right, it's going to be another hundred dollars. But at some point you're going to have to issue the fine. Right, right. The fine. Oh, yeah. official, well, official you, you can't keep saying it. The, you the project where this has become an issue has not gotten themselves into violation territory. They've just gotten themselves into you know, I've been out here three times this week, and it's still not right. When are you going to get it? Right. And we'll make sure Heidi knows about it too. Because I will. Because I'll be, I'll be asking. Right, right. Just yes, I know you will. Mm -hmm. So I think that's it. I think, I think the rest of it is mostly stormwater related. There's things about contours, but I hate to like pick and choose on the rest of it. I think the rest of it we should vote with the stormwater stuff. And there's only one section of the storm water that we're really hashing on, right, Jen? Right. So I, I've looked what some other towns have done, and they reference specifically the regulations of their stormwater bylaw. The problem is the stormwater bylaw um, doesn't give us jurisdiction under the stormwater bylaw. It technically um, says any projects that is within the jurisdiction of the commission is exempt from the stormwater bylaw. But then we still have the ability to apply regulations. We can apply the regulations of the stormwater bylaw. That's what. That's what I was arguing. That's what we were talking about the last ago. one, <laughs> right? So I talked to Lisa about that, and she seemed she's like, I understand what you're saying, and I presented her with some bylaws who had that language. Literally, you know, section 7.0 becomes a paragraph mm -hmm. referencing something else, and I, I think that's a great idea. I just want to make sure that the legality of that works both ways. That we can reference it that we can also take the jurisdiction that the stormwater bylaw has. So if it's saying, you know, not just projects that are subdivisions of five lots or more, but also um, things that disturb an acre or more, right? I mean, again, not very restrictive, not saying we're taking exemption, you know, like I said, the town I, I serve on 10,000 square feet or 50% of the lot. We're not, we're not going to that level. We're saying it's still the stormwater bylaw acre or you know the regulations under the Wetlands Protection Act. So that's a discussion we're going to have tomorrow. Okay, so um, motion to approve the one, two, three, four fees you talked about. The, I'm sorry, it was the checklist regulation change, the bylaw fee delineation change, which we we voted on these individually. Remove the emergency cert and the reinspection fee. Oh, I'm sorry. We didn't vote on the reinspection fee of a $100. Uh, all those in favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed? Yeah. Yeah. So unanimous? Unanimous. Yeah. Okay. So I guess that's it. We don't have to vote total. So those will be the four four changes that we make, and we need a motion to continue the stormwater section. So second. All those in favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Decision time. I'll just sit on the top. I've got my agenda with me. Uh, 
242-1648, not the end of the DPW. So this one just has some yellow highlighted. <coughs> uh, take out the limited project crossing. I don't think that belongs in any roadway. Order of conditions. Um, take out the wetland markers. Again, we don't own the property out of, outside the right of way, so we wouldn't be putting wetland markers there. Um, I think I set the bond at 3,000. 3, There's only a short section of the roadway that falls within jurisdiction. And I, I looked, um, it was the same fee we charged on Waverly, maybe? Someplace else, we had done a similar water line. Um, Waverly was sewer. What was it? Autra? No, that was No, it wasn't. Oh, yeah, no, it was. It was the fire hydrants and the water line. Yep, the end and it was 3000 Or No, theirs was 2500 but cost of living increase. Um, so, again, the fertilizers I don't think belong in there. We don't fertilize the roadway. The car, coal tar-based pavement sealants, they wouldn't be using those on roadway anyway. So otherwise, it's it's standard conditions. Any questions, Joe? No questions. Cal? No. Okay. Jeff? Questions. Motion. I move that we approve the order of conditions for 242-1648 as drafted in the amendment. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? And that's unanimous. And the next one is 242-1646, uh, RCG. So this is the pond management. Um, I added, you know, that they have the uh, order under 242-1422, which is the same property, same, you know, different order conditions. So that order has to be closed before this order is closed. There's no letting that thing drag on. But I think they intend to close it much sooner than that. Uh, yeah, well, next probably around May we should give them a call and see how they're moving forward. I will, I will definitely keep on them about that. Plus they're, they're going to want their pre-construction across the street <coughs> soon, so we'll have lots of reasons to be talking. Okay. Um, the the this gives them a five-year order, which allowed them to not only do the treatment, but maybe Retreat. do hand pulling afterwards. We did that on Stern's Pond or one of the others. Uh, um, I don't, I might be missing it, but on pre, under pre-construction, baseline water quality testing, I don't see Yeah, it. it's all, it, all of that is in here. Um, that's, that's not yet, it's in during the. That should be done prior to anything. Needed to get to establish the initial baseline. Uh, yep, hold on. You said, yeah, you said that last I know. Mm -hmm. In the water quality is something they proposed within their, yep. their, their plan? Yeah. A, that was a point Al made consistently through this. So what are they measuring? Are they measuring, did they, someone define the parameters of water quality? Yeah, yeah. Turbidity yep. and... Well, essentially, I mean, I, why I, the reason I even brought it up is that they're making assertions that they're gonna, they're gonna conduct uh, water quality during during construction, and I said, well, "What are you comparing it to?" There's got to be some, you have to start somewhere, otherwise it's senseless. Yeah, no, you, it's, you have it during during construction. Why should have it? There has to be pre-construction. Pre That's what I was asking. If it's in, if those sorts of things are already stated within their plan that they submitted, they didn't have any they, plan to do that. They we didn't, we they they, didn't they, they had no plan. Yeah, they didn't revise that. the plan. Okay. They they. The, 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 they agreed to it, but they had no, they weren't offering it. No. Okay. Yeah, I'll push that. So in condition 51, it says the NACC will receive copies of reports and pictures detailing the results of the pre and post treatment surveys and water quality monitoring. I don't know that they've done the pre. I mean, the pre would be before they treated. It could be this spring, but I mean, it, it clearly states that. The trouble is that 51 is, 51 is clearly during construction. Right. I want. I want the initial baseline test okay. and results to be pre-construction before they do anything. Okay. And they, they, and they agree to that. Yep. Yeah, they do. It's, I, mean, I think 51 stays worded exactly yeah, as it is. And you add a new condition yep. as pre-construction. Right. I will. You go back to, we go back to 37. 
38, somewhere in there. Half of 38. I can, we have, um, I can do it um, right in the 42, prior to any work commencing on site, the applicant shall submit to the NACC for approval, of sales sequence, blah, blah, blah. That's exactly, it should be either included in 42. Or right, or right, right around there, yeah. New paragraph right mm -hmm. No, that's, that's perfect. Uh, you, could, you, could make it, you could make it part of paragraph 42. Right. By uh, prior to any work commencing on site, the applicant shall Conduct so the, the sequence and the pre-construction to and, and conduct the baseline water quality yep. testing. Actually, you're almost there because you have sampling dates right. as part of those things. So that's yep. where you just expound upon that in 42. Okay. Any more questions, Joe? None. No, 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 nothing further. Yep. Yeah. I don't have any questions. Motion? Move that we issue 2421646 as amended. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Next unanimous. Motion to adjourn. So moved. Segundo. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Next unanimous. We're all set.